Today we'll talk about the removal of rear wing end plates on the latest generation Formula 1 car using CFD from my general 2023 Formula 1 model. The goal will be to uncover how performance was affected and how the loss distribution behind the car was affected. Firstly, these are the two geometries I analysed. I didn't paste in a 2021 rear wing, I simply extended the end plate geometry. There are no louvers, no dive planes or cutouts since my goal is really to focus on the flow field around the rear wing tip and what it influences. Now the rear wing with the added end plates did get a little bit more downforce and a little bit less drag. However, the design is very unoptimized and I imagine that if you did optimize it, you'd see much larger performance gains. Interestingly though, adding the end plates reduced floor performance. As expected, the end plates themselves increased the pressure on the top of the rear wing, in particular towards the outboard sections. Now, this is because the high pressure buildup has less of a chance to spill outward. This being said, a traditional counter rotating vortex pair was shed just like the curved geometry. The main difference was in the height of the vortices, where adding the end plate produced a higher vortex. Now, our axial flowing vortices have a tangential velocity distribution which moves air even if it's far from its core region. Now, because of this, the vortices work to inwash the rear wheel losses, which are probably undersized compared to reality, as well as upwash the diffuser and cooling losses. The lower vortex does this more effectively as its cores closer, meaning the tangential velocity at these positions is greater, and hence the increase in floor performance is basically acting to help extract air from the diffuser more than with the end plates because of the change in proximity. And additionally, it's more effective at reducing the lateral size of the lower wheel wake as it's moved more towards the center of the car. I should also note that the vortices work off each other to move higher. Yeah, you can learn more about this in another video I did. Regarding the rule changes in 2022 to try and allow cars to follow closer by reducing the so-called dirty air, I think that there are a large number of factors that helped, not limited to the changes in rear wing. For example, the lack of lateral diffuser expansion and removal of devices such as the barge boards, which were particularly sensitive when following a car, obviously made a difference. So it's impossible for me to know without having legitimate data on the 2021 and 2022 Formula 1 cars, but I imagine that with the rear wing changes, they were trying to shed more powerful vortices in more advantageous positions. Let me try to explain. The newer rear wings have a greater span and cord, which would increase their vortex strength. And removing the end plate should promote vortex production and reduce the vortex height. It could also potentially manipulate the tangential velocity distribution. Not to mention it matches the geometry concept for the front wing which probably tries to increase inwash and remove vorticity generation. But both front and rear wings being end plateless is great for styling. So in summary, we probably know that these changes allow us to inwash the rear wheel wakes and then upwash the losses from the center uh, more effectively, replacing these areas with clean air from the outside. But that's just my guess. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.